Matthew 10 verse 28. If you are there, let's read together. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Now when you look at uh, this natural life we are in, we often need uh, so many things to get us going. Some things come in form of electronic products. Some things come in form of food. Different facilities to help us get going. Now, it is interesting that in this life when we are buying, you know, some facilities, we always want to go for something that will live long. Um, no one goes into a shop to, to buy something that will soon break down. We desire something strong, something uh, that will give us the value of the money that we've spent. And if you've noticed, uh, the more durable something is, the more expensive it is. So really, we measure value in terms of how long something, you know, will be used or how long it can work. So But well, sometimes because of financial problems, uh, one can compromise to buy a cheaper product. But well, in the long run, you actually realize that cheap things are actually expensive. <laughs> Usually it will break down and you need to buy another thing or you may need to repair it. So, but the general desire is to get something that will be durable. If one had money, I mean, he would want to buy something which lives longer. And actually, we see this uh, in our everyday life, in the way we, we spend money. When you look at a parent, for example, they struggle to raise money and pay for a child's school fees. Why is there that struggle? Why is there that commitment? Because you are not looking at an instant result. You are trying to secure a better future for your child. And we see this same behavior in other aspects of life. I mean, right now I'm building. And building a house is not an easy thing. <laughs> you, you spend a lot of money trying to buy cement, trying to buy this and that. And, and just to put the slab, it's quite a lot of work. And then raising the structure and then later on you want to put the roofing now can you imagine if after you've roofed your house and then something terrible happens maybe a hurricane or some wind or some earthquake destroys everything that has been the labor of your life. Well, you cry. Because 
Chifukwa. That is a reflection of so much labor which has gone to waste. So people invest in so many things. Especially in things that will live longer. You don't build a house today and decide to break it tomorrow. And that is why it would be so painful for you to lose out everything. But you see, there is another resource we usually invest in. This resource doesn't stay with you for five years. You live it with it during your lifetime. So there is one most durable resource that one gets to have in this world. And that is life. And this particular resource, you don't go in some shop to buy it. You, you don't ask for a warranty to say how long will it be. But others have had this life for 50 years, others 60, others 70. And actually for much of your time during the day, you want to protect this resource. You want to eat when you feel hungry because your life is getting threatened. You want to put it under a nice shelter because you want your life to be that of... You want your life to be guarded and protected. For those who are motorists and you drive, you want to drive carefully. So that your life is protected. And because of that, we treat life so precious. No one will just give up his life anyhow and any time. When you get to feel sick, you want to get some medicine. Why? You invest so much in this life. And that is why we cry when someone dies. <laughs> because we won't see that person again. And in speaking about this, I'm reminded of one incident. There is a certain woman. Very wonderful woman. She was living a well-to-do life. As far as money is concerned, well, one would say she didn't have a need. But at this particular time, she started developing a disease, lupus. But this person wasn't religious. Religion was the last thing she wanted to talk about. But well, at this time I was called to, you know, pray with her. And we would read some scriptures and talk and share. But one day a strange incident happened. At this time when she was devoting her life to God, she started having a lot of questions on her mind. Why certain things happen that way? So this particular time, she told us a strange experience she had. My wife was there. That morning, she woke up and she was standing by the window side. And suddenly, she saw a vision. Now, remember, she 
is not someone who was coming from a religious background. And so, when she had this experience, it is not some Pentecostal trying to fake up things. So as she stood by the window side, she saw an incomplete house which was built up to the window level. And if I can recall correctly, there was a ball of fire which passed around. I heard her explain the experience. And she was so puzzled. She didn't know what it means. <laughs> but one thing she was certain is that she was fully awake when she saw that. I tell you what, when she told me that, I completely had no idea what that thing had to do. <laughs> I, I completely had no idea what it meant. An incomplete house up to the window level and a ball fire passing over it. But my wife heard that explanation. <laughs> And she ha actually had the interpretation right there, but she just kept quiet. After some time, when that lady finally died, and I think I was driving, and then my wife started telling me about... Th that was long after this woman was buried and she died. And my wife started explaining on about that same incident. She says, see, the time that woman was exp explaining that, <laughs> right there when she was talking, my mind was opened. That the house represented her life. And very soon she may leave us. Now, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Do you understand what I'm saying? God speaks in symbols, in illustrations. I was there when that woman was speaking that. My wife was there. <laughs> but the interpretation was not for me. And actually, that woman happened to be the aunt of my wife. And for God to have given her the interpretation, she obviously needed that interpretation. Her house only went up to that far. The question I want to ask you is, how long will your house go? You know, life is a journey, and you just don't know when the Lord will call you. And you can have so many dreams and so many passions. I want to be this, I want to be that. But well, Breath is not in our hands. There is God who knows the time which has been determined for each one of us. And this again leads me to another incident. This particular time, a vehicle just came over the house. And they told us there is a man who urgently needs to be prayed for. We didn't know this man. But somehow he knew about us. So he said, please, he has called for your prayers. Well, you'd say, well, how, how can you jump in a vehicle? You don't know these people well. <laughs> that is why we must be led by the Spirit, isn't it? <laughs> so, well, we got on the vehicle and off we went. And when we reached this place, it was a very beautiful house. Actually, 
when we arrived at this place, I thought we had arrived at a hospital. You know. There were so many cars outside. And very big, nice uh, house. And when we proceeded to the living room and there were so many relatives. Now, I've never seen this man. So then we proceeded to the bedroom. Very beautiful house. And when we entered the bedroom, I was looking around looking for the patient. <laughs> but he was actually lying on the bed with a heap of blankets over him. Then they rolled over the blankets. Oh, you, you, you wouldn't love to see the sight. The man had grown so thin. You know, you could see uh, the bones in the cheeks here. His body was all sunk. It was gone. And you know what he was saying? Pray for me, pastor. Pray for me, pastor. I don't want to die. Now, do you think when he said pray for me, was that a request out of faith? When someone says pray for me, well, it really looks or implies like someone has faith, isn't it? But that wasn't a request of faith. It was a request and prayer of desperation. I couldn't, I couldn't believe this man was the owner of all these expensive properties I was seeing around. At that time, he desired life. At that time, the money in his bank account could not save him. All the Powerful, great doctors were there. But sometimes when death knocks on your door, <laughs> it means it's just time. But when I looked into the eyes of that man, there were eyes of desperation. His elderly mother came in to try to turn him. Because he was tired. Sleeping so imagine, he did not even have the energy to roll over and turn the other side. And he said, I need health. I don't want to die. In that moment, if he could look back and see all his achievements, they never meant a single thing in that one moment. Is it not a pity that a human being can spend so many years chasing after something which is not really something but nothing? He was right at the end of the tunnel of his road. And obviously, why most people wouldn't want to die, you are looking at the, the loss of everything. Many times people think they need something when they don't need it. They think something is a need when actually it's not their need. That man lying on the bed, what he needed was not life. There was a more important need for him. Because it was shortly after that, I was at home, and another woman, very energetic, very strong, she came over. She said, Pastor, I need prayer. I remember we were with Brother Chavula. We said, well, what kind of prayer do you need? She said, well, I don't have money. My landlord wants rent and 
There is no food at home. I just need God to help me somehow. So, Brother Chavula was sitting all over there on the other sofa. Well, we told the woman, well, you kneel down, we pray for you. Just as we were starting to pray, an ugly scream came out of her mouth. She started manifesting evil spirits. Rolling down like a snake. Oh, she was screaming. Then afterwards, when we said amen, she found herself lying on the floor. She said, hey, what happened? What happened to me? I'm lying on the floor. We asked her, how are you feeling? She says, I feel very light. I don't feel myself. I feel very light and so peaceful. <laughs> I just wonder how many people in this life are carrying so many burdens in their hearts. Burdens of so many evil spirits abiding and residing in their lives. Now look at it this way. The woman was all healthy. She was strong. But she thought her need was money. <laughs> The other man dying. He had the money. He had a big house. He, he never needed money to pay rent. Two people in different situations which are diametrically opposed. One thinks she needs money. But as soon as we start praying for her, she actually needed salvation. The other one thought he needed healing. He needed to continue living. <laughs> but guess what? He was on his last page of life. Remember yesterday we said, you are writing a story. You have the ink of life in you. And you are writing a story on the pages of time. And you don't know when you shall put the last stroke on your page. But when that time comes, you don't need to be desperate. You know when my time comes to die, I want to go in peace. I want to go like Paul. Telling Timothy. Timothy. I've run a good race. And now I'm ready to go. That is how saints live. How many want to live this world like that? <laughs> you don't want to live this world, looking at your pages and you say, oh God, what a mess. Now look at this. This man who was dying on the bed, obviously he felt the loss of all his achievements. And surely when he dies, and he never had salvation in his life, it's really a loss. But there's a greater loss. <laughs> there's a greater loss. I mean, if we are to measure life, the durability of life, even if you were to live up to 80 years, if life continues after death, for a long period of time, it means this present life is not so durable. That is true, isn't it? 78 years, that's a short period of time. Compared to a thousand 
or eternity. So like a wise person who goes in a shop looking for something durable, it is important to invest in durable life also. In the scripture we read it as everlasting life. It, it lives on forever. That's a better investment, isn't it? <laughs> you know, there are these insurance companies, they sell life insurance. In case something bad happens, we'll take care of you, your funeral, and all that. As a preacher, man, I am also a salesperson. I also sell insurance. But I sell eternal life insurance. I tell people there is... You need to make a better investment. Because you don't know what may happen tomorrow. <laughs> and look, after you die, this insurance doesn't take care of you to go in the grave. This insurance will take you out of the grave and live forever. Oh, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. You know the song, huh? Yeah, you want to have that assurance. <laughs> Not just insurance, but assurance. You know, it is too risky to live through this life being unsure of what you end up like. I can't take the risk of saying, I don't know after I die where I'll go. That is too risky. An investment to undertake. Why should I invest all, in, into all sort of things in this world and forget about the reality of life after death? So this man dying on the bed, he looks over his investments and well, he may have felt what a loss. But there is a greater loss.